Welcome everybody. I wanted to have a little project this year on my YouTube station. So really what I wanted to do was open up my program that I run and show you everything that goes into my program. And that goes from preseason preparations, that goes to the regular season, the postseason, our movement and conditioning program, every single training session that we run, I'm gonna make available to you on YouTube between two and five minute clips. I'm also gonna give everybody the opportunity to download the PDF files of every training session for free. I am going to give a tactical lecture every single week pertaining to what I see the team doing and um, updating the team's tactics, how, however often we have to do that. I am going to explain to you how I use tactical periodization, how I use physical periodization concepts. Um, all these things from a macro cycle to a micro cycle, um, we're looking at what's the difference between how you prepare in preseason to the regular season, how do you use video, how do you treat the postseason differently, how do you treat the offseason differently, and how do you treat, uh, again, in a college situation it's a little bit different, but I'm going to basically give you everything that we do hands down so you can have an inside look. And my hope is that you can use the information that I give you to improve or at least take parts to improve your own personal programs. Uh, you can email me at coachdbernardo at gmail.com. Uh, I'm happy to answer any of your questions that you might have. So this is going to be a major project. I'm going to dedicate a lot of time for this. You can check me out on my Instagram at Marcus Bernardo. There, but really, the bulk of this project is going to be available on YouTube on a daily basis. I'll be posting videos, and I'm going to go into right now a tactical well, not a tactical, I'm going to go over how I planned preseason right now, the components of it, the components of tactical periodization, uh, the attacking principles of play, defending principles of play, physical periodization, micro cycles, all that stuff. I'm going to go over you with you right now to kind of set a foundation for what's going to take place throughout the preseason in the year and then in about two or three days uh, you'll be able to see the training sessions one at a time come on my YouTube station. So again if you have any questions coachdbernardo at gmail.com happy to answer any of your questions and I'm really looking forward to sharing all this information with you and your feedback always is appreciated as well. So here we have the August training schedule. We will start training on Thursday this week on August 8th. And I split this into weekly cycles. And just for planning purposes, I did a gray, blue, yellow, and green cycle. Each weekly cycle is called a micro cycle. The monthly cycle is called a meso cycle. And the full season cycle is called a macro cycle. So we split the macro cycle into a preseason, an in season, a postseason, and an off season. Now, if you hear us talk about G minus three, G minus two, that's the game. That is, if we're three days out from a game, it's G minus three, then G minus two, and G minus one. So this is tactical periodization, so just gonna go over this quickly. So you have to define what your game model is. And the game model is basically how you want your team to play. And when you look inside the game model, your game model basically is your fundamental beliefs of how you think this game should be played. Now you can, you can alter your game model from week to week, but really you still will have those fundamental beliefs. When you teach the game from the game model, you're gonna focus on the four moments of the game, attacking transition, attacking organization, defensive transition, and defensive organization, which we will get into those later. So your tactical periodization, your part of tactical periodization, I know that everybody makes a lot of tactical periodization, but I feel it can be simplified quite easily. It's basically how are you gonna teach your game model over a week, a month and a season, right? And the teaching of this game model can be your entire team, it could be a unit like the back line, the midfield, the, the strikers, whatever it is. It could be inter units, some players from each of those lines, or it could be individuals. But usually in tactical periodization, the individuals will train in the exact positions 
that they would play in your, in your game model. So again, a, a, a typical one week cycle, we will go over that, but you know, you have a game day, then the next day is recovery day, it's a day off. After that, your first day back is a lighter training day, and then you go into a strength day. When we say strength, we really mean training in shorter distances, less volume of training, maybe you make the grid smaller. The largest training day is your endurance day, that's the hardest day, usually you go 10 v 10, maybe from 18 to 18, and then you start to go a little lower intensity until you get to an activation day where you go over tactics and just kind of a, a few, uh, high exertions the day before a game but very short duration and then we'll talk about physical periodization which is simply planning of the workload of your team physical periodization has to overlap with your planning and tactical periodization you really i mean if you don't have some people have the fancy equipment and the heart rate monitors and the gps if not you just ask the kids you know, on a scale of one to five, five being the hardest, how hard was training today? Are you guys feeling tired? Are you not feeling tired? Do you kind of gauge it? Um, Preseason is basically the time before the season where you're going to focus on, you know, your training and you're teaching your game model. And in season, you're really focusing on the opponents. Week to week preparation for the opponents. In season, preseason is focusing on your team and your game model. In season, obviously you're going to focus on your team and your game model, but you're also going to take into consideration planning for that next opponent. Here we can see a chart of what I just went over, how you know, if Sunday was the game day, Monday is off, Tuesday is a very light day, recovery day, strength day, smaller portion of the field on Wednesday, Thursday is your highest intensity day, sub principles on Friday, uh, a lower intensity day, medium intensity on Friday, Saturday much lower intensity getting prepared for the game. So now let's look at the sub-principles and tactical uh, periodization. Sub-principles are for the moments of the game. So in attacking organization phase, you're building out of the back, then you're building into the midfield third, and then finally into the attacking third. Guardiola would say it takes 15 to 25 passes to build out of the back, into the midfield, into the attacking third. That, what, that's how many passes it takes to build a good attacking shape in the attacking third. Next, uh, the sub-principles of defensive transition, mental commitment, the second you lose the ball to defend immediately, the immediate pressing and team recovery, and third, the quality of your one-on-one -on -one defending. Next is the defensive organization. So basically talking about team shape. So you're gonna step up and push up on the opponents to stop their build-up play. Normally you do that in, your, in the opponent's defensive third. That's kind of setting up a, a, a press for them to play in, whether that's aggressive zonal pressing or whether that, it, it really depends on what your game model is. The lines of depth, the correct spacing between the lines, because when you're trying to set up defensive organization, you have to make sure that you're compact, that there's not space for the other team to play in between the lines. And then finally in the attacking third, number three is basically your lines of depth. And that really depends what your game model is. You're going to keep a real tight line, or you're going to have multiple lines of depth in the attacking, uh, in the defensive organization phase. Next is the attacking organization. That is the force phase. Um, basically, when you win the ball, do you read the situation right away and say, "Hey, can we shoot? Are you in a position to shoot and score? If you can, then do it. Are you in a position to hit a direct ball that's going to put somebody in on goal to score? If you are, that might be a really good option." If neither option is available, then do we start to build the play? Do we start to fill the channels? The wingers get wide, the striker is up top. And do we start to possess the ball so we can build an attacking organization shape so then we can build our attack? Attacking principles, pretty simple. Penetration with support, mobility, and balance. The defending principles, press, support, delay, compactness, and balance. You'll see all these principles put into our training sessions. And last but not least, we have our training principles. Complex progressions is number one. Basically saying training should be simple to complex. That's debatable, but we generally follow that. The law of propensities, which is kind of a big word, but it's basically training the important moments of the game over and over. So you're gonna keep changing it but you keep changing the experience, make it realistic,
but the important moments are what we're going to train. Specificity, all training, uh, and all training sessions relate to the game model. For me, in a college situation, this is definitely true. It may be a little bit more debatable in a player development model. Uh, principle of horizontal alternation specificity, I could barely say it. Um, basically just saying monitor your workload, right? Don't overwork the players. They're not going to be at their best. Make sure that your physical periodization is in line with your tactical periodization. Um, coach's instinct, meaning if there's something that really sh strikes out at you that you think is important, that go ahead and, and take care of that. So like we said, the micro cycle, the goal of a micro cycle is, to ch is really to achieve your highest level of performance on match day, right? So the reason why you organize your training sessions and your workload the way we do is so you can have the highest level of performance on match day. And here is a simple, simple chart that just kind of explains the four phases of the game. So phase one is basically you win the ball, you're going to initiate the attack, you say can we play forward or do we build? So build the attacking uh, structure accordingly. Phase two, can we finish uh, the attack? So creativity in the attacking third. If we lose possession of the ball, we begin to press, we win the ball quick, back quickly. Um, press from multiple angles and then phase four if we don't win it back by pressing we defend the goal we get number central uh, and we really get a good defensive organization shape to us and that goes straight back into if we win the ball we go we go do we counter or do we build so that's just kind of reinforcing the four moments of the game this is a, the last chart about the game cycle. It really is the same chart I just sent you, just kind of with a little different wording. So the information I went over in this video really is fundamental information for you because it's going to relate to what we do in training for the whole entire season. You'll see on the lesson plans how each session is related to the game model and also directly related to attacking organization, attacking transition, defensive organization, defensive transition, and you'll even see some of the sub-principles put into the lesson plans as well. Hope you enjoyed the video and stay posted because, stay tuned because fast and furious here we're going to have training sessions being posted on a daily basis. So I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you enjoy the whole season on YouTube. And again, feel free to email me at coachdbernardo at gmail.com.